Okay, so this is a nice functions exam question. First of all, we've got to find the equations of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the uh, function f. So, for first of all, we recall that, um, as it says here, we can't divide uh, by, or as it implies there, we can't divide by zero. So, there's going to be asymptote there. So, you can make the uh, denominator equal to uh, zero and then rearrange to get your first asymptote. For the other one, what you can do is look at what happens when x tends to infinity, when x gets very, very, very big. Um, and I'm going to write b for a very big number. I'm going to substitute it in. So instead of f of x, I'm going to write y, so we can see what the asymptote is doing. So I'm going to write, replace x, because x is tending towards infinity, so it's becoming a very big number, over uh, b minus q. Now this number is so incompre incomprehensibly large that q becomes insignificant. So essentially, you've got 3b over b, and the b's cancel out. So you're left with 3. So your, as x tends towards infinity, your other asymptote is going to be uh, y equals 3. So they're both of the uh, asymptotes. Um, part b, find the value of q. So let's look at the information we've been given. So we know the asymptotes intersect at this point 1, 3. Uh, so I tried to sketch that out there. So we know the yellow line there is the line y equals 3. Um, and if the vertical asymptote, x equals q, is intersecting at the point 1, 3, well, we know what the x value must be then. Uh, it's got to be 1. So q has to be uh, 1. B, we're finding the distance between two points. So we're going to be using uh, this formula here which I'm just going to copy across. So that's the formula, and the two points we're looking at are P and Q. So I'm going to label them then. So uh, I'm going to call P, it's going to be my uh, X1, Y1, and Q is going to be my X2, uh, Y2, and then I'm just going to substitute in. So uh, it's X1, minus x2, so that would be x minus 1 squared plus, and the second one is going to be uh, y1 minus y2, so that is uh, y minus 3, all squared. The first thing we should spot is the first part is already correct. So, We've already got x minus 1 squared. So what we have to do is remove the y and replace it with uh, x. Okay, of course, we have an equation for that, which is at the top here. So I know that y is equal to 3x over x minus 1. Because remember, we worked out what q was in part b. I'm now going to replace my y that I've got here with 3x over x minus 1. Uh, which I've done there, so there we go. And now we've got to combine this using our algebraic fraction skills. So I'm going to write both of those. Uh, so they're fractions now. I'm going to write the whole number as a fraction, so it's 3 over 1. Uh, we need a common denominator. So we need a common denominator of x minus 1. So I'm going to times uh, the second fraction by x over 1 over x minus 1 as follows. So I've just highlighted the fraction that we're looking at now and then I'll uh, substitute back in after we've uh, worked with it. So common denominator then is x minus 1. So as I said I was going to multiply the second fraction by x up minus 1 over x minus 1. I'm going to expand it out and uh, combine the denominators on the bottom. So I've got my first part 3x. Then expand out those brackets. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. I think we'll see what's going to happen here. Minus 3 so that was that part. And then minus 3 times minus 1 is going to give me plus 3. So, yikes. That simplifies. The 3x's 
cancel out. So I'm left with plus 3 over x minus 1, which is exactly what they want. So I'm now going to write it over here in full. That is it.